Hello, it's Sonia from The Pretty Stitch. We are going to get started on this project. So for this mitten project, we're making mittens today. I am using a G or 4.25 millimeter hook. These mittens are going to be made cuff up. So starting at your wrist and then working up to your fingers. So for the cuff, you're going to use a G hook or 4.25 millimeter if you want smaller mittens, smaller adult size, I should say. And if you want larger, if you have larger hands, then you're going to want to bump up to an H hook or 5 millimeter for the cuff. And then for the hand part, you're going to want to use an I or 5.5 millimeter. So I'm using the G for the cuff, and then for the hand, I'm going to use the H or 5 millimeter. And worsted weight yarn, number four, got a ton of it. So enough chit chat, let's get started. So we are going to chain two. So I've already started with my G hook here. And we're going to work foundation single crochet. So if you've never done that, we chain two in your second chain from your hook, you insert your hook, you pull up your loop. So you have your two loops. Now normally with a regular single crochet, you would yarn over, pull through both, but we're going to yarn over and just pull through one loop, then yarn over, pull through two. So you have created one foundation single crochet. And I like foundation single crochet for cuffs because it is stretchy, a little bit more flexible and easier to, you know, put on and off, more comfortable. All right, so we're going to work right here. If it looks like a chain, you're going to insert your hook right in there for your second one. Pull up your loop. See so you have your two loops, yarn over, pull through the one, yarn over, pull through two. So another way of looking at it, so you can see the chain right there, we're going to insert right in there, pull up our loop. You can just to think of it uh, as chaining one. So you chain one and then yarn over, pull through two. So I'm going to continue. You're going to want to work 28 foundation single crochets. So I'm going to work my 28 foundation single crochets and I will meet you back at the end of this row. All right. So I have finished my 28 foundation single crochet right here. So now we need to form this into a circle. So as you can see, it's got a little bit of flexibility, which is really nice for foundation stitches. So we are going to just turn this guy into a circle and we will be working in rounds. This entire project is worked in rounds and there is no sewing, which is really great. And to make our circle, we won't join it with a slip stitch like we normally do. We are going to work in continuous rounds. Now I just want to say doing it this way, helps prevent a seam, but if you are changing colors, your colors are going to look staggered. And for some people that are very OCD, that would really bother them. It doesn't bother me. And also we have right-handed mittens and left-handed mittens. So I try to have that on the, you know, the wrong side. It would be on the palm side and you wouldn't see it. So if it really bugs you, then to switch colors, you can join with a slip stitch, you know, like that and, you know, change your color chain one and then work your stitch. But I prefer a continuous round. And if you worked these all in one color, you know, you wouldn't even, wouldn't even see it, but I do want to use two colors. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so we are going to join this with a single crochet in the front loop. So here is our front loop and there is our back loop. So with our front loop, we are working a single crochet. Now what you will want to do with this pattern and if you made the mitts or the let's say fingerless gloves you want to use stitch markers. So this is our last stitch because we are working in continuous rounds and sometimes it's hard to keep track of you know where your round ends where it begins. So I have this I can't find a scrap of yarn in the room I'm in and I'm too lazy to go and get some. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I just found this guy I don't even know, it's some kind of gold something. But it'll work as a stitch marker. Just like that. You could use actual stitch markers, you could use a safety pin, you know, whatever you have on hand. I'm cheap. And I probably lose if I had a bunch of stitch markers, I'd probably lose them to be honest. So th this way is just probably best for me. More economical. All right, so we've worked our first single crochet. Our next stitch is going to be single crochet again in the back loop. And you are going to continue this all the way around. So you're going to work front loop, single crochet, 
and back loop. So it just creates a little bit of an interesting pattern for the cuff. I mean, you certainly could work it all in regular single crochet, but I find that to be a little bit boring. So I just like to mix it up a little bit, you know, like I said, with using basic stitches, but just, you know, mixing them up a little to create something interesting. At least I think it's interesting. Maybe you don't like it, that, and that's okay. We all like different things. So I'm going to continue this working my front and back loops all the way around, and I will meet you back at the end of round two. Okay, so I have finished round two. So you are going to repeat round two, working in the front and back loops all the way around for four more rounds for a total of six rounds for the cuff, and then we'll get ready to work um, the hand part. So I'm going to continue. I've switched to a different color, and I am not joining, but again, as I said, if you don't like your colors to look staggered, then feel free to join with a slip stitch and then chain one and then work your single crochet and just continue with the pattern. But I'm not going to do that. As I said, this part won't show and unless you walk around like that, then it would show. <laughs> Okay, so now I have completed my six rounds of working my single crochet. So you can see what I mean by changing the colors, how the colors are staggered. I actually think on some projects it looks kind of cool, but you know, again, if, if it bothers you, just join with a slip stitch, chain one, work in the same stitch, and that will avoid that. Now you will have a little bit of a seam, so you just have to, you know, I guess, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, one of those things. <laughs> can't have all the nice things, right? Just, <laughs> but anyway, this won't even show. So now we're going to switch to our H hook. And I changed colors. So we are going to be working in the front and back loops again. So what you're going to want to have happen is you want to make sure that, and I should have said this earlier, and I apologize for that. Every time you make a stitch in the front loop, you want to have, when you work the next round, that same stitch also to be in the front loop. So you can see it easier on the back loops here. So here is a back loop right here and then I worked in the back loop right again. So these two back loop stitches line up with each other. Same with these. These two were worked in the front loops. So you just want to make sure that you know every front loop stitch is worked in a front loop from the previous round and every back loop stitch is worked in a back loop from, from the previous round. So now we are going to be working in extended single crochet. One of my favorite stitches, I just find it to be so versatile, especially in the round. I know some people think hate it and think it's ugly, but I don't. I think it's really nice and it's really easy and I'd rather make extended single crochet than single crochet, but they all have their place. Single crochet has its place. As we, you know, I said, we just made a whole bunch of them. All right, so our first stitch, we are working in front loop with our larger size hook in extended single crochet. So if you've never made one before, insert your hook like you would working a single crochet. You're going to yarn over, pull up your loop. You have two loops. Yarn over, you're going to pull through a loop or chain one. It's the same thing. You just created a chain. You're going to yarn over and pull through two. So it's similar to working the foundation single crochet, except we're not going to be working right back in that stitch again but it's the same principle. All right, so the next stitch is extended single crochet in the back loop. So I chained one or pulled through my loop and pulled through both loops. So I've made two and I'm gonna to continue to do that. And for the next, um, for these three row or three rounds, I'm sorry. So this is technically round seven. So seven, eight, and nine, you're just going to work even. So working one stitch in the back loop, one stitch in the front loop, whoops, all the way around. So I will meet you back at the end of round nine. Okay, so I've just finished round nine, so now we're going to get ready for round ten. And round ten is we're going to start working the thumb, and this is going to be the left mitten. So for the first four stitches, we're going to work in the pattern, so that means front loop, working our extended single crochet. And again, you can change colors wherever you like or just make them all in one color. You can decide 
I love working with color, so I try to pop in colors wherever I can. Sometimes it doesn't look the best, so then I will make it all in one color, but a lot of projects I will incorporate color. So here I've worked my first four stitches in pattern, so front loop, back loop, front loop, back loop, back loop. So now we are in a front loop stitch, and we are going to pop in two extended single crochet right in that same stitch. So there's the first one, there is the second one. And then the next one is a back loop, so now you're going to continue in pattern. So this is the back loop. Now we're at a front loop stitch, so you're going to continue working front loop, back loop, back loop for the rest of round 10. So I will meet you back at the end of round 10. Okay, so I have just finished round 10. So after round 10, you will have a total of 29 stitches because we increased by one. So now we are going to work on around 11. So again, the first four stitches are just even in pattern. So front loop, back loop, working our extended single crochet. And now we are at our two stitches that we made, and this is starting the thumb. So what you're going to do is in this first stitch you're going to work in both loops. You're going to work two extended single crochet in each of those two stitches. So then you'll have a total of four. So we are increasing to make room for our thumb hole because we're making mittens. So there's two, and now I'm going to work back loop in the next stitch and front loop. So we're just going to continue on in the pattern for round, of for round 11. And at the end of round 11, you will have a total of 31 stitches. Okay, so I'm not sure where we left off. My camera card decided to say I'm done. So we switched to another one. So we started round 12. Round 12 we're working even for the first four stitches. So front loop, back loop, front loop, back loop, extended single crochet. So now we're to our thumb. So this first stitch of the thumb you're going to work in both loops and you're going to work two extended single crochet in both of, lo both of those loops. And then the next two stitches you're going to work even. So one stitch in each of extended single crochet. And then the next stitch of the thumb area, we're working two stitches. So we're just increasing it on the ends here. So book ending it there. So there's a big, big fuzzball on that. Well, hopefully it'll get hidden in the pattern. But there you go for the thumb. So you see the two there and the two there, and then just worked even in the middle. So now we are back to our stitch pattern of working in the back loop. We're going to have to do something about that fuzzball. What on earth? Well, I'll worry about that later. <laughs> so we're going to be in the front loop. And continue for round 12. So at the end of round 12, you will have a total of 33 stitches altogether. So we increase by two again. So I'll meet you back at the end of round 12. Okay, so I have finished round 12. So as I said before, at the end of round 12, you will have a total of 33 stitches. So now we are ready for lucky round 13. So we are going to, again, work the first four stitches in our regular stitch pattern of front loop, back loop, in extended single crochet. back loop. So now we are back to our thumb and as you can see it's starting to flare out. So we're going to work two extended single crochets on the ends again. So there's two there and then we'll work even until we get to the end of it. So you're going to work even in the next one, two, three, four stitches. There's stitch number four, and then in stitch 
technically this is our sixth stitch here, so there's a total of six, we're going to work two. So you will have increased up to eight. So at the end of round 13, you'll have a total of 35 stitches. And we are going to keep going of our stitch pattern of that. This is the back loop. And then front loop, back loop to the end of round 13. And as you can see, it creates a really nice texture working in the front and back loops. I think it's a really pretty stitch pattern there. And not too complicated. So I will meet you back at the end of round 13. Okay, so now we're at round 14 and we're going to repeat what we did on round 13. So we have a total of 35 stitches after round 13. So now we're at round 14. So our first four is working in the pattern. So front loop, back loop, And now we are back to our thumb area, so we're going to work two extended single crochet on the end here. So we have a total of eight stitches, now we're going to increase up to ten for the thumb area. And we will be done our thumb area soon. So I'm just working, I worked my two in the first, so in the next, so this is one, two, three, Four, I think it's six stitches. Five, yep, and six. We work even, so one stitch in each, and then the last stitch here of our thumb area, we're going to work two stitches in there. So at the end of round 14, you will have increased up to 37 stitches, I'm pretty sure. So we are going to continue oops, working in our stitch pattern of front and back loop. So this is the back loop and front loop. So as I said before, you want your front loop stitches to line up and your back loop stitches to line up. So if you worked a back loop stitch in the previous round, then work a back loop stitch again in that, in that stitch. So. Okay, so I have finished up round 14 and you do have 37 stitches, so now we are round 15 and I switched to a different color, or to my darker blue again. I think I have what my color pattern down, I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see how it looks. <laughs> so we're going to work the first four stitches in our stitch pattern, so front loop, back loop, so there's stitch two. We are almost done increasing for our thumb. So there is three, and stitch four. So now we are going to increase again for a total of 12 stitches for increase. So we're going to work two stitches on the end. I believe in the next eight stitches you will work even. So let's, let's count and let's see. And again, you're working both loops. So here is stitch one. My daughter was sneezing. I'm not sure if you heard that or not. <laughs> She's my allergy child. Three, four, five, six, seven, and stitch eight. Yep. And now we'll work in this last stitch here, two stitches. And then you'll be back to your stitch pattern of working, this is the back loop, and then the front loop, back loop until the end for round 15. Okay, so we have finished round 15, and after round 15 you'll have a total of 39 stitches. So now we are going to get ready to shape the thumb. So that's a fun part. So what we're going to do is the first four stitches work in the stitch pattern and this yarn, I'm not sure it looks discolored here. 
I'm not sure if it's actually dirty or the age. You just never know because this yarn's been sitting and I'm hopefully it's just like some dirt maybe from sitting and then when I wash it I will actually throw these in the washer and it'll look beautiful again I hope. I actually had that happen with a shawl that I made with this really old thread that somebody had given me and, and it was blue <laughs> of all things and um, I stitched up this shawl and I took a chance and then I washed it well, and blocked it and it turned out beautifully. It, it looked brand new. The stains came right out. So hopefully that's the case, but I guess we'll find out. So anyway, let's continue. So first four stitches working in our pattern of front loop and back loop. Okay, so now we are at our thumb. So we're at our thumb. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook in this first stitch here. And we're going to skip the next 10 stitches. So you're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is our last stitch of where we worked our thumb. So you're going to insert your hook in that stitch as well. So there's our last stitch. Sorry for bumping the camera and I've got this ugly stained up yarn. Not sure what's going on. Hot mess. And we're going to work our extended single crochet. And so you can see we have now created a thumb hole. And now we're going to continue with the rest of our pattern. So now we're right back here working in the back loop. And I sure hope this yarn cleans up, but we'll see what happens. That's what happens when you store yarn for a while. You just, you know, I don't know how it got dirty, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going. Or maybe it's discolored. The color almost looks like the color faded. I have no idea. It is a mystery. So this is round 16 again. So I'm just going to continue working in my pattern for the end of round 16. Alright, so I finished round 16. We've created our thumb hole. And at the end of round 16, we're back to 28 stitches. So now we are going to continue in the pattern for round 17 and 18. You're just going to work even. So I'm going to do that. So I will meet you back at the end of round 18. So you'll find that this stitch here, this will be a front loop stitch that we when we joined for the thumb hole. So we're right back in our pattern because this is a back loop stitch. So this will be a front loop and then we're back to the back loop. So I'll meet you back at the end of round 18. Okay, so I finished up round 18. So we've worked round 17 and 18 even. So now we are ready for round 19. And rounds 19, 20, and 21 are going to be the same. So I will show you what to do and then I will meet you back at the end of round 21. And that is the end of, we will finish off at the end of round 21. So you will cut your yarn and then we'll just finish up your thumb and then your left mitt will be all done except for weaving in ends. So for round 19 what you're going to do is you're going to repeat what we did down here. We're going to work single crochet, just regular single crochet in the front and back loops all the way around for rounds 19, 20, and 21. So just giving it a little cuff at the top of your mitt or fingerless glove. So I'm going to continue working in my front and back loops, working in single crochet for rounds 19, 20, and 21. So I will see you back at the end of round 21. So here I am at the end of round 21. So what you'll want to do to finish that guy up, we're going, now we can join in our first stitch with a slip stitch, just like that. Now we're ready to cut this yarn. So 
So we'll thread that guy through. And then now I can cut my yarn I've been carrying. So that just gives me less ends to weave in. Which is always a bonus and a plus. So this is the left mitt here. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to work the cuff of the thumb here. We're almost done. So we have 12 stitches that we had made for the thumb area. And we're going to wanna to work in the front and back loop pattern of the single crochet, what we did here and down there. So when you attach your yarn, you're going to wanna to attach it where it's not going to show. So this is the back side of the mitt because it's the left-handed mitt. So right here is where we had joined to create the thumb hole. So what you'll want to do is just insert in the front loop there and attach your yarn. So it might seem a little fiddly at first, but once you get going, it's going to be just fine. So we're going to work a single crochet right in that front loop in that same stitch and now we're ready to go so we're going to work a back loop so you're going to have a total of 12 stitches all the way around working in front and back loops for our pattern and you can work in continuous rounds we're going to work two rounds of this there's that terrible discoloration. Oh. You can tell it's it's kind of bugging me. <laughs> I hope it comes out and when I wash it. I hope so. So I think this actually turned out really cute. I think one of my kids will see it, my one daughter, and she's gonna want them. But I might have to say, nope, they're mine. So this stitch 11, so right here, actually no, I don't believe it, stitch 11, stitch 10. So this is stitch 11 front loop, and then stitch 12, see there it is where we joined. So back loop in that guy, and so we completed the one, and then, sorry for bumping the camera kind of, you know, hard to finagle with um, looking through a camera. <laughs> it's a little, little crochet gymnastics going on. All right, so now we're going to go back in our pattern of front loop, back loop. So I'm going to finish up this second round, and then after you've finished the second round of the cuff, then you can finish her off and cut your yarn. So I finished my second round of my cuff, so now I will join in my first stitch. And now we can cut. And so your left mitt is finished. Of course, weave in your ends. And now we'll get ready to work the right mitt. All right, so now we're ready to work the right mitt. So the right mitt, some of it is the same as the left. So you are going to work your 28 foundation single crochet. Join it like we did in the left. So for your first nine rows, or rounds, I'm sorry, because you're working in rounds, is going to be the same as the left mitt. So go ahead and work your first nine rounds. So just to recap, your first six rounds are in regular single crochet, working in front and back loop. After you join this, make it into a circle, and you're going to join it by working in the front loop there. And then for rounds seven, eight, and nine, you're going to work in extended single crochet in front and back loop. And then round 10, we'll get ready to work the thumb hole again for the right mitt. So I will meet you back at the end of round nine. Okay, so we are working on the right-handed mitt or fingerless glove. So I have worked my nine rounds just like we did for the left-handed one. So now we are going to get ready for round 10. So there are two different mitts, as I said before. There's a right hand and left hand. So to do the right hand one, we're going to continue in our stitch pattern. So we're working in our front loop only. And we are going to work 
23 extended single crochet around and then when we get to stitch number 24 is when we will start the increases for our thumb hole. As I said before, I like I like an actual thumb on my fingerless gloves. I know some like they just have the thumb hole and it's cut off, you know, right here. And for some reason like that just bothers me cuz my thumbs get cold. <laughs> I don't, I don't like them just hanging out like that, but to each their own. So we make an actual thumb. Or I do, for all of my fingerless gloves. It's just, it's a thing I have. So I'm going to continue stitching around, working 23 extended single crochet in my front and back loops. So I will see you when I get to stitch 24. Okay, so I have worked 23 extended single crochet, so now I'm at stitch 24. So basically we're just doing the opposite, you know, for what we did for this hand. For the, But I have sometimes trouble reversing things, because some patterns will say, just reverse it for the other hand, and I'm like, oh, uh, what does that look like? So I prefer directions that say, you know, work X amount of stitches. So that's why we're doing it this way. So if you can, you know, just automatically reverse it, good. That's great. You know, I, I applaud you for that. But I, I'm not, I'm not good like that. <laughs> All right. So this is stitch 24. So what we're going to do is we're working in the back loop, and we are working, actually, we're both loops. I'm sorry. We work both loops for this. So we're going to work in our both of our loops, and. We work two extended single crochet just like we did to set up the thumb for the other one. So now we're back to front loop and finishing out this round for round 10. And here is our last stitch. Whoops, I'm stitching the stitch marker. Let me just pull that guy out of there. It's a pathetic stitch marker, isn't it? It's all like frayed and stuff. <laughs> but you know, it's still working. It's still serving a purpose. I'm sure I have better ones around somewhere. <laughs> all right, so we are going to mark that stitch. All right, so now we're ready for round 11. So for round 11, we are going to, around 11 through 15, we're gonna repeat what we did for our left-handed mitt right here. So you're going to work, um, so when you get to, you're going to work your extended single crochet in front and back loop, and then when you get to the thumb, which is right here, you're going to work two extended single crochet in each of these, and then after that you're going to work two extended, extended single crochet on the ends. So when you get to your thumb and you work in the both of the loops there, you're going to work two and two, and then in the middle you work even in both loops. So you're working around or this is round 11, so you're going to work rounds 11 through 15, just working the two extended single crochet on each end, and then working even in the middle. So you will have a total of, you will have increased to 12 stitches when you're finished round 15, and then round 16 will get, um, will go and join to create the thumb hole. So I will meet you back at the end of round 15. Okay, so I have finished round 15. So here is the thumb hole. So now we're going to do round 16 and get ready to turn it into a thumb hole. So what you're going to want to do is you will work your extended single crochet in front and back loops for 23 stitches and then you will be at the thumb hole section. So I am going to work my stitches and then I will meet you back. Okay so I have worked my 23 stitches now we are at the thumb section so we're going to do the same thing as we did before. So this stitch here, you're going to insert your hook, and then this stitch, where is she? Right there. So there's 12 stitches, so stitch number 1, stitch number 12. So working through both loops, and we're just going to work our extended single crochet, and we have created 
our thumb hole and then you're just going to continue with the pattern so this is the front loop right here back loop front loop and then pull out my stitch marker and working my back loop so that is round 16 so what you're going to want to do for rounds 17 and 18 you're going to work even so when you come to this stitch that you joined this will be a back loop stitch and then stitches 19, 20, and 21, you're going to work single crochet in the front and back loops. And then you will have finished your cuff, and then we'll come to our thumb, and you're going to work 12 stitches. So you're going to work 12 stitches in single crochet in front and back loop for your thumb, and then you can finish it off and weave in all of your ends. And remember, you can cinch that guy, and then your mitts will be done. So I'm gonna finish that up. Okay, so here is the finished right mitt right here. So I'm going to weave in all my ends, and here is the finished left mitt. So after I weave in my ends, I'm, you know, you could add some embellishments, some buttons, or whatever. I probably won't for these, but if you made like a solid color, you know, a buttons would be really cute, or, you know, you could add a bow or whatever, you know, get creative with them or keep them plain and simple, or you could add buttons up here. So I hope you like this project and thank you so much for watching.